Located on 225 acres in Garden City, Long Island, Nassau Community College, a member of the State University of New York System, has close to 20,000 students attend the school each year. The college mascot is Leo the Lion, and these are his stories of the school's absolute best and brightest who have graduated over the past 50 plus years. So let's catch up together as the Alumni Association of Nassau Community College proudly presents Lion Tales on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. Welcome to Lion Tales, powered by the Nassau Community College Foundation. My name is Aurora Workman. I am president of the Nassau Community College Alumni Association, and I'm here with my friend and co-host, Dr. Linda Nadian, a proud graduate of Nassau Community College. And together, we'll share stories that will inspire, uplift, and often amuse you. Each week, Aurora and I will introduce you to alumni of Nassau Community College interested in sharing their experience here at Nassau Community College, along with the secrets to their success. NCC alumni can be found in virtually any place in the United States and in just about any profession one can name, in the halls of the state and county governments, in hospitals, as doctors and other health care professionals, as business leaders, law enforcement, personnel, and more. So we hope that if you're an alum, you will hear us and contact alumni at ncc.edu. Look for many new and exciting events on the Alumni Association's social media pages, Facebook, Instagram, and our web pages at www.nassaucommunitycollege.edu slash alumni. If you, our listening audience, has any positive news you would like to share about Nassau Community College, engagements, births, graduations, weddings, and or accolades, email us at alumni at nassaucommunitycollege.edu and we will shout you out. Well, today's guest is very special to me. Uh, she is Glennis Boone Andrews, class of 1977. Glennis is a retired and currently is self-employed as the owner of her own shipping and packaging company in Chesapeake, Virginia. She has an associate's in retail business management and serves 52 states with her print copy business and is also a notary. Welcome to Lion Tales, Glennis Boone Andrews, class of 1977. Welcome. Thank you. Thank so, you. So, Glennis, I, you know, I'm so excited to be able to talk to you. Glennis used to babysit me, do my hair. <laughs> I traded her in for my sister. <laughs> used to pick on me, so I decided I was going to take Glennis as my sister instead. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. how are you doing, you Glennis? Are. I am doing well. Thank you. Thank you, little sis, as I call you. <laughs> um, and uh, I'm so glad to be a guest on your show this morning. Well, I'm happy to have you. So yes. tell us about your decision to attend Nassau Community College. Now, we spoke about starting in 1973 and then returning in 77. So that's like an interesting time period in the world, too. It is. Um, after graduating and doubling up in my high school years, I graduated at the age of 16. Wow. And uh, the reason I did that was so that I could take the whole year off instead <laughs> of gra graduating with my class. Well, my parents weren't having that. They said, no, you're going to college. So I didn't really have that much of a choice in the matter. And uh, I was... Uh, enrolled at Nassau in 1973, still at the age of 16. So I was, you know, really young and everything was uh, very big out there for me. It was a whole new world and what I was used yeah. to. And uh, so I, I wasn't able to get into what I really wanted to do as far as retailing. So I was put in the African American Studies program just to get my foot in the door. And then I changed the next semester into retail business management. But uh, my experience, it was, you know, it was it was different back then. Um, we had uh, the regular buildings. It was the old Mitchell Field. Yeah. I, I might be dating myself back then, <laughs> but <laughs> it was Mitchell Field and we had uh, trailers, we had uh, hangars and the regular buildings. So it was quite interesting. Did you drive? How did you get to the campus? Uh, I was driving at the time, yes. Yeah, because mm -hmm. 16 mm -hmm. is, is young. And 1973, oh. so what was what was the vibe in 73 here? 
oh, 73 was, you know, we were all happy people. You know, it was just like, <laughs> you know, the love children. Yes. And uh, it, the, the vibe was very well. Oh, yeah. that's great. Yeah, because, I mean, 73, I can remember. So, love, you know, peace. Yeah, and peace, peace and love. And <laughs> it was still. So what yes, were some of your I, favorite courses that you did have here? Uh, well, I did. I took up um, textiles and marketing as well as retailing. Oh, wow. That sounds interesting. Yeah, business courses, yes. Do you remember any of your professors? Yes, I do. And one in particular <laughs> leaves an impact, and he was my retail uh, teacher. His name was uh, Professor Ralph Shipp. Oh. And, uh, yeah, the reason I say that was, you know, he always uh, dressed and carried himself so you know, astutely. He wore mm-hmm. ascots to, to oh. class, and he really, you know, fit the bill as far as <laughs> retail, you know. He was like a model. Oh, and, wow. And, yeah, and uh, <laughs> he, I, unbeknownst to me, one day he said to me, uh, may I ask you something? And I said, uh, sure, it was after class. He said, how do you coordinate your clothes and dress so well, you know? <laughs> I was like, I wanted to say you are the one, but, you know, I said, well, I guess it's just hereditary. I've always had a knack for coordinating colors and, you know, outfits and things like that. So that that was a really proud moment for me, for him to uh, notice even that. But he was uh, my favorite. Professor. Oh, that's so great. Yeah, you're always beautifully dressed. Yeah. <laughs> and so now, so you, in, in 73, that was the beginning. And then we were discussing about returning in 77. Yeah, after that year, because it was not my decision to attend, it was my parents, I did a year and then I dropped out. I went on to be employed with uh, as as a clerk and a benefits clerk with Madison Square Garden and several other jobs in PR firms and all. And uh, one day I decided after a couple of years, as you can see, a few years rather, I said, I'm going back to finish what I started. Yeah, that's great. And that's what I did. And I paid for my paid my own way to go back to school. And I thank God finished um uh, and graduated. That, that was a great experience, you know, um, being able to be here at 16, because as I was, also at Nassau by 16, because I had doubled up too. And you mm-hmm. know, oh. uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, so that was, that was a great experience. What, what was one of the goals that you thought that you were going to be doing when you were here? Well, I, I wanted to uh, basically do displays, mannequin displays in retail stores. Mm. Uh, that was exciting to me. That didn't happen. However, I did work in a few retail um, stores, and I liked the fact that of the, seeing the new merchandise come in and, uh, you know, tr- mm. displaying. I did a little displaying of the mannequins there, <laughs> and uh, everything was just... Uh, and, and cashiering and customer service. Mm. Those those were some of the high points that I liked Fantastic. in that profession. You are listening to Lion Tales on the voice of NASA Community College, 90.3 WHPC. I am a royal workman along with Dr. Linda Nadian. And our guest today is Glennis Boone Andrews, retail manager and proud graduate of NCC class of 1977. So, Glennis, we were just talking about um, your retail management and wanting to style mannequins and do showrooms and and um just the as the the aesthetic beauties of retail so where did you go um after that uh after um was that after graduation now Mm -hmm. um in the retailing i basically i moved (laughs) out of new york too cold couldn't stand it never could (laughs) um so now i reside in virginia i've been here 32 years and um I have basically owned my own businesses. I've had several of them in which I've owned a salon, um, a school owner, a beauty school owner. I, I did attend beauty school as well. So, And now I'm an instructor and an evaluator as well with uh, the uh, NACIS, which is an accreditation agency mm-hmm. for 
uh, all these beauty and barber schools and so on and so forth. But aside from that, I do have my own business, uh, which is the Cove Business Center. And that, again, is packing and shipping. I do documentation, um, living wills, power of attorneys, uh, any personal and or business documents. I can do them for all 52 states. Wonderful. Oh, wow, that's so interesting. Mm-hmm. So now when in, in 77, now you from 73, that's sort of early on, you know, coming out of the 60s era. And now we're going into 77 when it's sort of the, the disco age and things are changing. What was it like upon graduation when you left Nassau uh, before you moved down to Virginia? Did you do you feel like what was the difference in the world as far as you your eyes as a student? Now you're a graduate and you're ready to move on. You know, what were some of your what, what were you thinking? Well, uh, first of all, my whole mindset was different because I was much more mature then. Mm -hmm. And uh, I attended evening classes for the more progressive students, if you will. (laughs) And I I really did enjoy those evening classes because I worked uh, at Madison Square Garden. So I had to commute from the city to Nassau Community College and go to, you know, take a few classes in the evening. So it was... uh, you know, if I, I look back, uh, it could have been hard, but I didn't think of it. My adrenaline, I have so much energy yes, anyway. Not anymore so much, <laughs> but back then, yes. <laughs> yeah, you know how you sort of think that you can't believe that you're actually, that you've done it, and then you look back and say, wow, I can't believe that I actually did that every day. Because, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, again, it, we were we were always talking to our guests. The younger guests would say um, that they're that they're just students and not working, but we were always students and working. <laughs> Right. And sometimes doing exactly. more than one job. Yep. And it's amazing how when I talk to students today and they'll sit there and tell me, you know, they have to go to class and they have to work. And I said, well, that's what we always do. Mm-hmm. But they're like, but my mom has me working nine hours, <laughs> less than nine hours a day. No, a week. <laughs> you know, so I want to reach out and touch somebody. But <laughs> if, if they only knew it's a whole different ball game, a whole a new generation out there. You know, it's like, oh. I have to gasp a lot of times, you know, at some of the things that are said. Whoa. I tell you, so, so what advice, like we have students and, and our listening audience who don't understand when we have guests that talk about the multiple occupations or, or, or positions that they hold. Uh, give some insight to that for them. Well, uh, I'm a people person, number one. So I, I tend to get bored doing one thing all the time, day in, day out. And in my field, I get to meet a lot of different people from different backgrounds and cultures. And I just love the rapport and the continued um, customers that, uh, the repeat customers, I should say, Mm -hmm. that come back. and, And no one is a stranger to me. I can, you know, and I love that about people because you always, there's always something you can learn from someone else and, and their, and their paths that they, they take in or are in. Right. And it's yeah. good that, you know, the students today know that, you know, who you meet, even for that one moment, that first impression and that lasting impression or how so, they may not remember your name or they may not remember, mm-hmm. you know, where you come from. But as my Angelos used to say, but they do remember how you made them feel. And so you've had a lasting right. impression in my life. And I know that students need to understand that that's what they want to you know they won't they don't want to burn a bridge <laughs> right yeah it's very right. i think it's important too to teach uh students about that you know making connections and even keeping in touch with your teachers because as as time goes on you may you know refer back to them and say tell them what you're doing in life and 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 maybe have recommendations from them if you're going into different programs so we always say you know try to build those relationships as much as possible Definitely. You are listening to Lion Tales. Today's guest, Glynis Boone Andrews, is a proud alum of Nassau Community College. Glynis is retired but is self-employed overseeing a shipping and packing company, which is a UPS access point business. My name is Linda Nadian, along with Aurora Workman on The Voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. Hi, I'm Dr. Shelley Flace with today's tip for kids from the American Academy of Pediatrics. No one can keep their eyes on their kids every moment, so it's important to create a safe environment. Have working smoke detectors and anchor furniture to the wall so it can't tip over. 
Windows should have stops so they can't open more than four inches. Also use safety gates or lock the doors leading to the garage or outside to keep your child safe. For more home safety tips, talk with your pediatrician or visit HealthyChildren.org. Welcome back to Lion Tales, powered by the Nassau Community College Foundation, on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. I'm your host, Dr. Linda Nadian, along with Aurora Workman, and our guest today is Glynis Boone Andrews, a businesswoman and proud alum of Nassau Community College. So tell us a little bit about the business and how you do serve the community at large in Virginia. We spoke about it a little bit, but can you sort of uh, touch upon uh, some of your connections with uh, the business end and, you know, living in another state now and even though you've been there for a while? Yes. Um, I found a niche and a community need. Um, I am a UPS access point. And that only means not a store, but an access point. So if your package does not get delivered to you, you can either have it sent to my establishment or um, your package will be there waiting for you at the access point. So it's actually a pickup and a drop off. So if you had something to return, you could do so as well. Um, I also, as I mentioned before, uh, do documentation uh, for clients. Um, We do background checks, uh, just anything from A to Z. We do testing, uh, training. I also am affiliated with the DMV, whereas if you need as a driving online driving improvement clinic, so I've, I've tried to add so many different things and have my my hands in a whole lot of different uh, avenues, yeah. as well as uh, being a notary. So say, for instance, uh, the difference uh, uh, that I can do is you can call me from any state and mm. need any documentation online. Mm. And I can have it sent to you via email or we can do a a session where we can see one another over a device. So not only does my number uh, reflect as a contact number, it also is a, you can text, or we can talk online. Yeah, and and with 52 states that, I mean, shipping and packing really is is a, a huge sort of avenue to do well in because you know the benefits and and how you're dealing with the obstacles of competing with Amazon and you have UPS stores and all these drop off points that really must do well because th- there's returns and some of them are very expensive returns and nobody wants the merchandise lost and how mm-hmm. do you, how are you dealing with that type of you know kind of um day to day uh issue with uh packing and shipping and making sure everybody gets what they want on time yeah well we're not we're basically mom and pop yeah Uh, so we're not big as the uh, amazon or ups store in itself but uh for those that uh like a more personable type of contact yeah we're there for them you know and some people like that they they don't like waiting in long lines or no they uh, definitely do they do not. Right. <laughs> yeah. Or if the post office closes early on Saturday or may not be open on Saturday, here I am and I can send that off. Right. You know, right. So. That's so amazing because we really do need that because I, I think we notice here in New York that Amazon is using different establishments like Kohl's is a drop off point for returns to Amazon and then the UPS store is also a drop-off point, and and that is um, independently owned. And I see that they have quite a bit of business now because people are using that because they don't want to stand in a line at Kohl's and wait to send something back. So I think what you're doing will be probably just as big up here uh, because we do need the mom and pop. We need that mm-hmm. that type of uh, establishment that we can go to. And, and people know you, obviously, right? Oh, yeah. And by my being retired, I don't want to work hard. I want to right, work smart. Right, you are smart. smart. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> what, part of, what part of Virginia do you say? Chesapeake. Uh, oh. Virginia Beach, Chesapeake. The big, long bridge. Oh. Yeah, I went oh, over yeah. the bridge. I was scared yeah. on that bridge. So tell us about Chesapeake. Because, if, you know, having left, you know, one thing that you don't know that you have, that we all three have in common, well, Linda doesn't know, is that we're all from Uniondale. Yeah. You know? Oh, great. <laughs> 
And Linda is a principal nice. at Smith Street School. Wonderful. <laughs> okay. Then you attended yes. Smith Street? I, I attended Smith Street, <gasps> Turtle Hook, <gasps> and Uniondale High. <laughs> wow. <laughs> now, do you, what do you remember about Smith Street? Do you remember any of the uh, teachers there? Oh, yeah, Miss Clark. Uh, she taught me um, when I said I can't. She told me, throw can't out the window and bring in can't. Oh, and my that's little amazing. eyeballs were like, mm, okay, so I always remember that about her. Miss mm-hmm. uh, Silverman, uh, Miss Joan Donnell. <laughs> what was, yeah. um, was Jim Real the principal? Or you don't remember? No, I yeah, I, I can't remember. Ah. <laughs> I, said, I can't even remember my principal there. <laughs> All I remember from Smithy was Mrs. Smothers, who later became Mrs. Hayes. Oh, yes. Remember? <laughs> oh, sure, definitely, Mrs. Smothers. And, then and she her did the home teaching. <laughs> yeah, I think it was her her cousin or so who taught in um, Uniondale High. If, oh. I forget her name. She was in the uh, business course. I don't know whether it was shorthand, it might have been, or some home ec or, or so. Yeah. But I can't remember right off the bat. Yeah, because you remind me of her. You remind me of her because she, this mother, just always sit there and, and give us etiquette lessons. And <laughs> be a lady. And <laughs> yeah. Now she yeah. says that it's, ty- it's sexual harassment. <laughs> It's Title Nine. Yeah. We're all in trouble. We can't say act like a lady. <laughs> right. I went to school with her son too, Kevin. So, right. so it's been a, yeah. It's been a while. When did you graduate from Uniondale High School? In 1973. Oh wow! Yes. To graduate with my mm-hmm. sister. Oh, that's just. <laughs> I mean, it's such an amazing Jocelyn? time. Yeah, period. you graduated with Jocelyn. No, you graduated a year before because oh, yeah, with you left yeah. right because you left yeah. early. But yeah. I, saw, I saw your sister every day. Yeah. <laughs> we were friends. That's the way we were all. And she was my playmate. That's you it. Know, and Anita, yeah, it was great. You know, that was what grew, wonderful about growing up in, in a close-knit community, which, unfortunately, our kids today aren't getting that same kind of feel. You know, I tell them they will no. never be able to feel what Northgate felt for us. Right. You know, yeah. and I, even though I That's... want that for them. <laughs> You're listening to Lion yeah. Tales on the Voice of Nassau Community College. 90.3 WHPC. My name is Aurora Workman, along with Dr. Linda Nadian. And our guest today is a former resident of Uniondale, New York, Glennis Boone Andrews, retired. She's a businesswoman, current small business owner, and a proud alum of Nassau Community College. So, Glennis, as we can, um, finish up our conversation, what are some of the advices? Like, you see a lot of things, and you have some beautiful children and beautiful grandchildren. What are Thank some of the you. things that you impart in their life to be successful today? Well, to always follow your dreams, number one. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, it never let anything stop you from doing that. Um, I also, uh, you know, tell them to be kind and uh, mm-hmm. to get their lessons in school as well because that's going to take them along uh, for, uh, you know, a very long way in life, you know, Mm -hmm. and although you may face obstacles from time to time, that's okay. It's use it as a training tool to make you better and rise above that. Exactly. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So when you're, so the classwork that you do now or the, um, the lessons that you impart, uh, what is your audience for your, for your beauty school, for the accreditation now, who do you, oh, who do you, gosh, who do you train? <laughs> well, um, I'm not doing so much training now as mm-hmm. I am evaluating. Okay. And I guess if you use that instead, I am evaluating the students mm-hmm. uh, as far as being in some of the schools and the Title IV funding schools and how the school is uh making sure they're getting the proper education that they applied for Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, making that contact. And as being a school owner, sometimes I get negative, sometimes positive, but I can always, I always try to encourage them to see a different light or see it from a different perspective. And then, you know, they get it. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is why I might be disgruntled about this, but okay. I see another way around this or how I can approach it differently. 
Mm. Do you have a lot of students come back and um, remember the things that you have imparted in their lives? I do. And I always said that uh, it was those that really had that thirst for learning that really tugged on my heartstrings to be there for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so what Absolutely. are some of the things that, you know, are, are you know, because it's wonderful, like when I, I used to teach um, in Roosevelt Junior Senior High School and I run into one of my students, you know, who and who always recalls something that I've said to them. What is that one model that you have or that that phrase that may have kept thousands, you know, from 100 to thousands of folks, and you don't know it. <laughs> yeah, but you right. impact their lives so so much. Yeah, um, and that's just it. It's, you know, you you really changed my life, and you know, where I thought maybe I couldn't, you gave me that, you know, extra drive to tell me that, yeah, I could do it, and I did. And that's a beautiful thing. A mm -hmm. thing. So what's next? Because even though you are now a small business owner and, you know, I know that you're constantly, what are some of your hobbies? What are the things that you like to do? Well, I travel a lot uh, once a month with this, uh, the job as a subcontractor. Mm -hmm. um, Anyway, so I love that. I love the travel. I even once wanted to become a, a stewardess world, which is now a flight attendant. Oh, wow. <laughs> and then as I see them and um, I go, wow, I've got the best of both worlds here because I don't have to serve people in the capacity. <laughs> <laughs> Yet I can fly like I wanted to and see, see, the, see the states in the world, you mm -hmm. know. Absolutely, yeah. yeah, amazing. Yeah, that's always one of the things that, you know, as I would come, I'm like, when you know, because I'm always working and always working. And I said, what happened to the little moment where I used to be able to, you know, go further than the town next door? <laughs> you <know>? Yeah, how about that? <laughs> yeah, Even an I, overnight trip helps. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yes, I sit there, yes. but, but I would love to sit there and, you know, as a, as a free to go, be able to travel the country with my children if they still want to accompany me <laughs> okay mm -hmm. oh they will you know? yeah, the, the cross-country trip yeah. with the kids is the best one yeah All right and when you become a grandparent you have to travel i have a son in minnesota mm -hmm. and they're due to have uh they're expecting next month so oh, i've got to travel there and I'm not, I'm not too crazy about the cold don't get me wrong <laughs> but you know it'll be my eighth grandchild and oh. i definitely have to be there oh, this yes. year and that's their yeah. first baby uh, actually, it's the second after 13 years. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, we'd, yeah. like <laughs> we'd like to thank our guest, Glennis Boone Andrews, class of 1977. Glennis, it has been such a pleasure uh, speaking with you. And um, is there a business contact that we can give our listeners? Yes. Um, the number that I can be contacted is area code 757 eight. One nine eight four five five. I'll give it to you again at seven five seven eight one nine eight four five five. And I thank you. It's been a pleasure uh, speaking with you as well. Thank, thank you. you. We want to thank you for being with us. My name is Dr. Linda Nadian, along with my fabulous friend Aurora Workman, president of the Nassau Community College Alumni Association. This show is a production of the Nassau Community College Alumni Association. Visit nassaucommunitycollege.edu slash WHPC for more information. Available as a podcast on iTunes, Android Podcasts, and Spreaker. Lion Tales is powered by the Nassau Community College Foundation. On the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. We'll talk to you next week.